you know that I read a book um, just before the internet became um, a living thing for us all. Oh gosh, when was that? Yeah, I know. We're talking about the mid 90s. We're talking about now, just on the on the beginning of that. It's called Manufacturing Consent, I think. Um, I may be wrong. Actually, maybe another Chomsky book. Anyway, I read, and he's saying that in the late 19th century, you didn't need a huge amount of capital to start a newspaper. So you could get a newspaper started, and you could put your opinions out there. And it was a much freer environment for expression of opinion. By the time you get to the 1960s, you need, you need uh, a lot of capital to start something up. And he was saying that's a problem for democracy. Of course, then the internet came and it was like the Wild West. You could get your YouTube channel without spending a penny and get your opinion across to thousands, millions of people. But now it's shutting down again much more, closing down. So when you're right, about the freedom of expression, but there's always this problem of needing capital. Put aside, um, you know, this business of of having um, the, the right to say what you want to say. If there are if there are such large organisations that they can be gatekeepers, their opinions are going to matter so much because they can stop you. And and the question is, how do you deal with that? If you nationalise, say, Facebook or or YouTube, well, then you've got the problem of the government. The government. Yeah, yeah. but that. I believe that's very much so, and, it, and it, the, the way it comes in, I mean, yeah, I think because as, as a Catholic, there are, there are numerous things that, that the British people don't don't know about, will not be told about, um, which would give them, would they give them a different view, not just not, not specifically about the Catholic Church, but about our moral teachings and our other teachings. But there's a bias.